Arcadia Spiver. And Kathy Lewis as Mom. McGee, you hardly touched your dinner. I'm not hungry. Would you like some dessert? I made your favorite. Lemon meringue pie with spumoni ice cream. Not now. Maybe I'll have some for breakfast. Mm. I'll give you a hand with the dishes. Won't that make you late for your lodge meeting? I'm not going. Oh, McGee. Stop brooding. I'm not brooding. Do I care if they made George Lester chairman of the dance? Do I care if they gave him the job instead of me? Do, do, do you think I really care? Yes. You're darn right I do. Every year for ten years I've been waiting for somebody to jump up and say, let's make McGee chairman of the dance. Nobody ever says it. Only me. I wouldn't mind to resign from that lodge. Oh, McGee. Stop being such a poor sport. Poor sport? Just because I don't like the way I've been treated, I'd hardly call myself a poor sport. What would you call yourself? A sore head. <laughs> well, I, 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 I'm not really a sore head. I, I just find it difficult to accept defeat gracefully. The kind of a person that you'd call a... a... Poor sport. Yes. <laughs> I'll do the dishes. And you go to that lodge meeting where you belong. Order, boys. Order, gentlemen. The next thing on the agenda is a progress report from George Lester, chairman of the Fall Dance. Thanks, Doc Campbell. Ah, uh, fellas. Now, before I give my report, I just want to say something personal to all you wonderful guys out there. And believe me, this is right from the heart, too. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm sorry, George. It's just a nervous habit. Uh, well, go on with what you were saying. Now to get down to business. Now, I've written a list here of all expenses incurred. Now, if you fellas have any questions, please feel free to ask them. Now, the first item is the rental of the Grand Ballroom of the hotel. Now, that would cost $150. Now, the next one is... Question? Yes, McGee? Why do we need the Grand Ballroom? We can hold the dance right here, and it won't cost us anything. Well, I felt that we needed the prestige of the Grand Ballroom. After all, this is going to be an important dance. We're inviting the governor to be the guest of honor. We invite the governor every year, but he never comes. I think it's a waste of money. I think McGee is right. Order, order, boys. We can discuss this when George has finished his report. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> Next is the decorating. That will cost $175. Now, question. <laughs> I'm not going to sit here and let you drain the treasury dry. I'm going to put in my two cents worth while there's still that much left. $175 is very reasonable considering I got one of the finest decorators. He's coming all the way from Wichita. Bruce of London. <laughs> What's the matter with the decorator we've always used? Max of Main Street. He did a swell job on the American Legion turkey raffle. And it only cost 50 bucks. Well, this is going to be a turkey raffle. This is a big formal dance, and we've invited the governor. And to which the governor never comes. He might be. Order, boys, order. Now, let's try and conduct this meeting in the proper manner. Well, I'm trying to, Mr. Chairman. I'm trying to give my financial report, but McGee keeps interrupting. Okay, okay. I won't say another word. Go on and give your financial report, Mr. Baruch. <laughs> now, I think this next item is going to be a big surprise for everybody. The orchestra cost $800, but guess who I got? The New York Philharmonic. No. No, McGee. Don Moonley and his Melody Makers. He was just passing through on tour, and I managed to get him at his absolute rock-bottom price. Question. What is it now? Who is Don Moonley, aside from being your brother? <laughs> <laughs> the whole thing's getting...
getting pretty expensive, George. Uh, we're spending more than we stand to make on the dance. Yeah, well, first it's the grand ballroom, then some fancy decorator, and now it's this Don Melody and his moonshine makers. <laughs> Don Mooley and his melody makers. Well, whatever he makes, it's not worth eight hundred dollars. I think McGee's right. McGee's absolutely right. <laughs> so this is the thanks I get for working. I calm down, George. Now don't get huffy. I didn't ask for this job, you know. You clowns just came along and dumped it in my lap. Well, I'm dumping it right back. Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. The dance is this Saturday night. You can't quit now. Oh, yes, I can. And you can get someone else to run your dance. Who? How about that loudmouth in the front row? I accept. <laughs> What's the big rush? I got a lot of work to do, honey. And a lot of George Lester's work to undo. Can't wait a few minutes until you finish your breakfast? No, time's running out. Mounts up on you. Minute here, minute there. Before you know it, what do you got? Indigestion. <laughs> if you don't slow down. I gotta get into town and see that booking agent. What booking agent? The one who handles Don Moonley and his money makers. Melody makers. <laughs> well, they were money makers when George Lester was in charge of this thing. You know, dear, you're gonna need an orchestra. Don't you think you ought to keep Don Moonley? Well, not for $800, I'm not. You want to be reasonable? Fine. If not, I'll get somebody else. You know, Lester just doesn't know how to handle his agents. I gotta go. I'm gonna show this guy that he's not dealing with a bunch of yokels. Good luck, dear. Where's my hat? Where'd you leave it? I put it on the table. I told you not to eat so fast. <laughs> See Mr. Benton, please. If you're an actor, he can't see you today. No, I, I'm here to hire a band. Oh, yes, sir. I am terribly sorry. Oh, it's, it's, it's quite a natural mistake. I used to be in vaudeville. Well, I'll see if Mr. Benton is busy. Mr. Uh, uh, McGee. Yeah. I did an act with a fellow named Fred Nittany. Nittany and McGee, the two likable lads. <laughs> How yeah. interesting. We're just a vaudeville act. The two of us did it together. I'll be here for you. <laughs> the Wistful Vista Men's Club. Yes, of course. Won't you sit down, sir? Thank you. Uh, oh, uh, you know, your secretary thought I was an actor. Oh? How stupid of her. <laughs> no, 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 it's quite a natural mistake. I, I was in vaudeville, you know. Uh, Nittany and McGee... Never mind. I, uh, I understand that uh, Don Moonley has been hired for our lodge dance for Saturday night. That's quite right, Mr. McGee. Well, I'm here to cancel the deal. Now, wait a minute. We made an agreement. You made an agreement with a man who is no longer in charge. Uh, do you have uh, uh, anything written on paper? Well, no, but that's showbiz, Benton. However, if you let us have Mooney for, say, $500... $500? Do you know who Don Mooney is? Yes, yes. He doesn't even play an instrument. He just stands up there and waves a stick. If you think I'm going to pay $800 for a stick waver... Don Mooney also sings. I've heard him sing. That's why he needs a stick. Five hundred dollars. Mr. McGee, surely for the fancy dance that your lodge is giving. <laughs> oh, dear. Type it. This is just a little hoedown that our boys have once a year. There's nothing fancy about this. Well, I certainly can't ask Mooney to take the job for what you're offering. Okay, okay. Then there's nothing else to talk about. However, uh, Mr. McGee... <laughs> Maybe I can find a less expensive band. I thought you could. Uh, won't you sit down again, please? Thank you. <clears throat> now, let's see who we've got let's here. Let's see who we have there. Huh? Oh. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. Do you see all right? Oh, I see fine. You can have Ray Richmond for $600. What about this band here? Oh. Chester Cook and his no. Captivators. <laughs> no, I don't think they'd be right for you. How much? $300. Sounds perfect. Now, why didn't you tell me about him to begin with? Well, because I thought... Because you thought that you'd make a buck. No. Oh, no, 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 no. Now, that's what you thought. 
You know, I'm on to you guys, Ben. Hmm? <laughs> you know, you're not dealing with some square from Hicksville. All right, McGee, if you want Chester Cook, you can have him. I kind of thought you'd see it my way. <laughs> yeah, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll give you a check and we'll just firm up the deal. Huh? Fine. You know, Benton, you're smooth. But, uh, I'm pretty smooth myself. <laughs> yeah. Yes, you are. Excuse me a minute, will you? Certainly, sir. Marjorie, get in touch with Chester Cook right away. I have a job for him. You're kidding. The boys are going to play for a dance on Saturday night. I'll wire him the bus fare. Well, where is it? Oh, uh, try the uh, Centerville Produce Company. Tell him it's just a one-nighter, but it's better than picking lettuce. Uh, here you are, Benton. Here's your deposit. Thank you. Tell Chester and the boys I'll be looking for him Saturday night at the men's club. They will be there, Mr. McGee. Thank you. Oh, Mr. McGee. Hmm? It has been a great pleasure meeting you. I must say you are a tough man to deal with. At showbiz, dog eat dog. <laughs> I bought for the dance tonight. That's beautiful, honey. You like it? Yeah, yeah, I love it. What do you think of the fabric? Oh, I, 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 I like it. I always have looked good in cardboard. <laughs> That's a funny thing. Sometimes I, I just don't feel I have your attention. Well, of course you do, honey. You know, on food and decorating alone, I saved the lodge over $238. Good. That's just what the dress cost. It's worth it. I don't mean to pat myself on the back, but if they hadn't turned this job over to me, I don't know what dress cost $238. I thought that would wake you up. Well, it's just that I got so darn much on my mind, honey. I'll get it. Hello, Mayor La Trivia. Hello, Molly. Is McGee here? Oh, yes, he is. Come on in. Oh, hi, La Trivia. What brings you over here? I just heard some very good news, and I've just heard some very bad news. What's the good news? Uh, the governor's coming to our dance tonight. Really? Well, what's the bad news? I just heard you're in charge of it. <laughs> There's nothing to worry about. It's going to be a great dance. I don't uh, mean to blow my own horn, but... Stand by for a trumpet solo. <laughs> oh, this is something very important. For once, don't goof up. Who's going to goof up? Everything is under control. What about the orchestra? Don Moonley, isn't it? No, no. I got rid of him. Took a lot of fast talking, but I got a first-class group. Chester Cook and his alligators. Captivators. The trip. We will show the governor a first-class time. I hope so. For years, I've been trying to get him to put the state fair here. Maybe now I can do something about it. The whole dance is under my personal supervision. Now, will you just go home and relax? Uh, relax. Well, I'll try it a little chum. <laughs> How about that, Molly? The governor coming to my dance. Yeah, it looks like it's going to be quite an evening. Yeah. Hope Max does a good job. He always has. If he's left alone. Oh, Paul. I'll leave him alone. I got complete confidence in Max. Absolutely. But it's just that he doesn't know about the governor coming. McGee, you weren't thinking of going down to the lodge to bother Max. Of course not. I just thought I'd... Drop in and say hello. I'll go with you to make sure you say goodbye. <laughs> oh, it's going to be beautiful. Yeah, Max is doing a great job. Hey, hey, I can use this paint for my sign. Why don't you let Max do it? Well, he's got enough to do as it is. Hiya, folks. How do you like the looks of the old place? Oh, Mr. Turner, it's beautiful. I wouldn't recognize the lodge. Thank you. Max, you're doing a great job. Thank Just you. Just great. Boy, the place really looks wonderful. Hey, this streamer came loose. <laughs> I, I guess it was supposed to hang down like that. Yeah. When you pull the string, it releases all the blooms. Well, well I'm, I'm sorry, Max. No harm done, Mr. Let's have some more balloons, Wally. We... we can't stay, Mr. Turner. We just came by to tell you the big news. Yeah. The governor's gonna come to our dance tonight. The governor, hmm? Just imagine. Let's go, dear. <laughs> how about this, Wally? That's the thing they used to fill up the balloons. Uh-huh. Oh, a bad look. idea. I wonder how it works. <laughs> Oh, I'm, I'm terribly sorry, Max. 
I didn't know the gun was loaded. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. McGee, why don't you go home? Let's go, dear. Oh, just a minute, Max. As chairman of this dance, it's my job. I don't care what your job is. It's my job to decorate this hall. Now, why don't you go home and let me finish here? He's right. Uh, let, let's go, dear. Thank you, Mrs. McGee. Just a minute. Max, I don't think I care for your attitude. I know I got you this job. And it's a big step from turkey raffles. And it's a short step to the front door. Come on, Wally, let's go. Yeah, but what about our stuff? We'll pick it up later. Huh. Touchy, isn't he? I'll talk to Mr. Turner. You see that door? Uh-huh. See the sign? Uh-huh. Please do. <laughs> Howdy. Hi. Is where the dance going to be? That's right. Who are you? Well, I'm Chester Cook, and these here boys are the Captivators. Howdy. <laughs> oh, well, I'm... Your... Chester Cook? Hi, you all set, boys? Oh, hello there, Mr. McGee. Mr. Benton, what is this? I'm Chester Cook. I know you're Chester Cook. Now, Benton, what's the idea? Is there something wrong? Well, what kind of a band do you call this? You don't like the Captivators? Howdy. Are you sure it isn't Cultivators? They look like they'd be more at home behind a plow. You're not passing these jug blowers off on me. Now, wait a minute, McGee. You wanted them, remember? You very cleverly talked me into this whole idea, you sly old smoothie, you. Yeah, but when I was in show business, it's doggy dog. Yeah. How did I taste? <laughs> but get me Don Moonley. I can't. He's playing another date. Well, then get me somebody else. I've got to have a good orchestra. I'm sorry, McGee. All my other bands are booked. It looks like you'll have to stick with Chester Cook and the Captivators. Howdy! <laughs> howdy, howdy! Now, will you stop that? <laughs> now, now, look. Get me a real band that plays real music. Well, we can play real music. We'll play any kind of music you want. We're right smart musicians. Look, what do you want, McGee? Foxtrots, rumbas, waltzes. These boys are pros. You name it and they'll play it. Yeah, but look at them. Gosh, if we thought it was a dress-up, we'd have worn a good suit instead of sport clothes. <laughs> it's no problem. You rent them tuxedos, they get haircuts, shaves, and they look great. What have you got to lose? Only my wife, my life, my friends, my home, my American citizenship. <laughs> oh, don't you fret, Mr. McGee. We'll do a bang-up job for you. Ain't that right, boys? Hi! <laughs> this is going to cost you a little extra money, McGee, but it'll be worth it. Oh, look, you, you spend anything you have to. Right. Let's go, boys. McGee! Well, howdy! Oh, 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 hi, honey. I, uh, talked Mr. Turner into coming back and finishing the job. Oh, fine, fine. W w where is he? He's outside. He won't come in until you go home. <laughs> uh, I can't say that I blame him. Come on, honey, let's go. Done a great job, McGee. Oh, thanks, Doc. I say the hall looks beautiful. Well, I just gave the decorator a free hand. I always say a man does his best work without interference. That's what he always says. Where's the orchestra, McGee? Uh, well, uh, uh, they'll be along any minute now. They had a few last-minute changes to make. Who is this Chester Cook? I never heard of him. Well, uh, uh, he plays mostly in the South. Things like the Dixie Cotillion and the Mardi Gras? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, things like that. There's Mayor Latrivia. There's the governor with him. Good evening. Uh, governor Standish, I'd like to have you meet one of our most distinguished citizens, Dr. Gamble. How do you do, Dr. Gamble? Honor, sir. And one of our most charming and gracious citizens, Mrs. McGee. How do you do, Mrs. McGee? How do you do, Governor Standish? And the chairman of tonight's dance, Mr. McGee. Well, I'd say you've done a splendid job, Mr. McGee. Th thank you, Governor. Uh, say, Governor, I, I understand that, that you might run for U.S. Senator next year. That's right. And with a little luck, I may be on my way to Washington. <laughs> well, I'm sure all the people of this state will be glad to see you go. 
Uh, uh, what I mean is, uh, you like a great governor. Uh, a senator. Governor. Well, thank you. Uh, now I'd like to have you meet our district attorney, governor. Oh, McGee! Oh, excuse me, honey, I think the band's here. Hi, Betty. The boys are here. Show them in. Okay, come on in, boys. Go right up on the bandstand. It's nothing to worry about. They look swell. Hey. Well, what about him? Uh, he's superstitious. Well, face him toward the wall. Yeah, turn around. Well, how do the boys look, Mr. McGee? Oh, the, the, they look just wonderful. I, I'd never recognize them. Quite a difference, eh, McGee? Oh, boy, I'll say. I'd say it was worth the hundred and twenty-five dollars. hundred and twenty-five dollars? What? The tuxedos, haircuts, shaves, Turkish baths. Turkish baths? The, the guy who rented the tuxedos insisted on it. Well, we're all waiting, McGee. Let's start the music. All uh, right, I'll see you later. Well, we're all set here, Latrev. It's a fine-looking group, I must say. I thought we'd get Governor Standish and his wife to lead us in the first dance. Good idea. I'll make the announcement. I'll make the announcement. <laughs> uh, may I have a fanfare, please? Give his honor a fanfare. <laughs> Good evening, friends. Welcome to our annual autumn dance. And a special welcome to Governor Standish and his charming wife. Uh, to start off the festivities this evening, I wonder if the governor and his charming lady would lead us in the first dance. Beautiful dreamer. And a two, and a four, and a six, and an eight. Kind of an orchestra is that? They're not too bad if you just look at them. Good heavens, Harry, what's that? Just follow me. I'll try. You nincompoop. As usual, you ruin everything. A fine chance we've got of getting the state fair here now. They may even have it in another state. <laughs> well, McGee, this should put our lodge right up there with the other big clubs. Like the Mafia and Murder Incorporated. <laughs> Stop that infernal racket! Is there something wrong, Mayor? Oh, I'm sorry, Governor, about this embarrassment to you and Mrs. Standish. I'll fire those yokels immediately. Oh, I wouldn't do that. I think they're a fine orchestra. Well, like, I, I'm sorry, Mayor, but I think this is all my fault. Well, now, gentlemen, stop apologizing. Mrs. Standish and I like nothing more than a fine old-fashioned hoedown. <laughs> Isn't that right, dear? Uh, oh, yes, sir. We simply adore them. Uh, do you boys play Bile Them Cabbage Down? Howdy! Steve's song of our new album, Songs to Call Hogs By. <laughs> then we're going to have a real dance. All right, come on, you fellas, get your partners. Arm for square dance. Get your partners. When I call the fingers, you do what I tell you. A three and a five and a seven and a nine. Sir, uh, thank you. This has been a wonderful evening. I hope you haven't forgotten our little discussion. Oh, now, don't you worry about that, Mayor Latrivia. I think this town would be a perfect spot for our next state fair. Wonderful. Well, dear, it looks like your dance was quite a success after all. Indeed it was, little chum. Wonderful party. Well, you know, putting on this sort of an affair is right up my alley. I used to be in show business, Governor. Oh, really? Oh, well, yeah. Uh, Nittany and McGee, the two likable lads? Uh, uh, say, uh, Chester, do you have a ukulele there? Uh, good night, all. Uh, good night. Gage Clark, Chester Cook by Norman Levitt, Secretary by Danny Nolan, Governor Standish by Sam Flint. Lodge members were Charles Watts and Frank Orth, Mrs. Standish by Ella Ethel.